So in this video, we'll talk about how to find the eigenvalues of two by two matrices. And there's other videos that do this, but we're gonna do some things that are gonna be a little more helpful. So first, we'll start out with just a simple example. If you've never found the eigenvalue before, if you're struggling with it, that's a great place to start. Uh, the second one, you may have heard people talk about the multiplicity of an eigenvalue. We'll give an example that works through this. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll do it in a way where we can get a general formula that will work for any two by two matrix in the world. You could put any numbers in you want and you could just plug it into that formula and it would give you the correct eigenvalues. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first we'll start with just this simple matrix, negative one, two, four, negative three. For the most part, there's nothing special about the numbers I picked. I just picked some ones that are gonna work out for us here. So the first thing you might have heard is to find um, the characteristic polynomial. And what that means is you take A, the matrix we've got, and we subtract off lambda times I. Remember what I is? I is just ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, also called the identity matrix. So for us, that looks like taking the original matrix, negative one, two, four, negative three, and subtracting off, and then when you multiply that lambda through, lambda times one is one, lambda times zero is zero, and so forth. So if you go ahead and do that, what you get is negative one minus lambda, two minus zero, four minus zero, and negative three minus lambda. Okay. So to get the characteristic polynomial, what you do is you take the determinant of that matrix that we just got, this a minus lambda i one. So if we go ahead and do that, if you remember for a two by two matrix, you take the first entry and you multiply it by the one on the other one, the diagonal minus, and then you multiply the other two terms. So four times two, okay? So if you go ahead and foil that out, what you get is three plus lambda plus three lambda plus lambda squared minus eight. And we're gonna be solving for lambda. So I'm gonna write it just like a normal polynomial. So lambda squared first, we collect like terms, we get four lambda minus five. Okay. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting this equal to zero and solving. So let's go ahead and do that now. So as I said, we're taking our characteristic polynomial, we're setting it equal to zero and solving. So for the most part, a lot of the problems, what you can do is you can just factor it. So this becomes lambda plus five, lambda minus one, right? That multiplies to negative five, adds up to four. And so if you solve that, you get the two eigenvalues, negative five and one. And these indeed are our eigenvalues. So again, as a recap of the steps, you start out with A, your original matrix, you subtract lambda I, which really just means that what you end up with is minus lambda on each of the diagonals. You take the determinant of that and you set it equal to zero and you solve for lambda. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this one may not seem really that different. I mean, there's a zero, but okay, what's the big deal? And we'll see it actually is easier, but it introduces a term that a lot of times you hear in classes. So let's go ahead and start the same way. So we're gonna go ahead and take a minus lambda i. Remember, that means you take your a, the original matrix, and you subtract lambda times the identity matrix. We get that one. And if you go ahead and do that, so two minus lambda there, negative three minus zero, uh, zero minus zero, and then two minus lambda. And again, the characteristic polynomial just means you take the determinant of what you got right there. So if we take the determinant of that, we get the two minus lambdas multiplying by each other, and then just minus zero, right? There's nothing else there. Okay, so now if we take the characteristic polynomial and we set it equal to zero, you could just square root both sides to get rid of that square. And what that gives you is two minus lambda equals zero or lambda equals two. So because of that, we say that lambda equals two, so the answer we just got, is an eigenvalue of multiplicity two. So here, lambda equals two is our answer. The multiplicity comes from the fact that we were squaring it and it equals zero. So if you were doing a different problem and you had a cube, the multiplicity would be three, or if you had a fourth power, the multiplicity would be four, and so forth. Okay, so let's jump to the last one. 
So in this problem, we'll go through and we'll just find a general formula that will work for any problem you want, uh, any two by two matrix. So as usual, we'll go ahead and take A minus lambda I. So uh, what that looks like, right, is A, B, C, D, and we subtract off lambda times the identity matrix, that gives us that one. Or if we go ahead and do that, we get A minus lambda, B minus zero, C minus zero, and D minus lambda. So because that now we can go ahead and find the characteristic polynomial just like before by taking the uh, determinant of this matrix. So if we do that, we get A minus lambda times D minus lambda minus C times B, all right, is B times C. And if we expand that out, we get A times D minus A lambda minus D lambda plus lambda squared minus B C. Remember again, we're so going to be solving for lambda, so let's write it just like a normal quadratic. So lambda squared goes first. Let's also go ahead and collect our like terms. So we get minus a plus d times lambda plus a times d minus b times c. Okay. So remember now what we need to do is go ahead and uh, set this equal to zero and solve it. So let's do that next. Okay, so how do you solve a quadratic equation? Well, generally you use the quadratic formula. So that's what we'll do here. So uh, remember what you do is you take the B term, the term in the middle, and you take negative that. So here we have uh, the negative and the negative cancel each other out, and we're just left with A plus D. Then we take the B term, which is A plus D, and we square it. Remember there's the negative, but the negative's gonna get killed off by that square. Uh, negative b times 4 times a, there's no term in front, times c. So that's going to go in there. All that over 2a, again, there's no term there. So we can do just a little bit of cleanup here. So that becomes a plus d plus minus square root a plus d squared minus 4 times a d minus b c, and all of that over 2. And just one small thing we can do if you want to, certainly don't need to, but you may notice that on the inside there, uh, this AD minus BC is just the determinant of the original matrix, all that over two. So this is a formula now that works for any two by two matrix you want. And to see that, we'll go ahead and test it real quickly. So here's that formula again, and we'll go ahead and apply it to this, uh, to this matrix A. And I picked that one because that was actually from the first problem, so we already know what the answers are. The answers we should get are negative 5 and 1. So let's go ahead and do it. So we take A plus D, so that's negative 1 minus 3, plus minus square root uh, A plus D squared, minus 4 times the determinant, so negative 1 times negative 3, uh, minus B times C, all of that over two. And so if we do that, we get negative four plus minus square root. So that's negative four squared, which is 16, minus four times three minus eight, all that over two. Or if we do that out, we get 16 plus 20 over two. We get negative four plus or minus square root of 36 over two, negative four plus or minus six over two, right? Negative four uh, plus six is two, two over two is one. Negative four minus six is negative 10, negative 10 over two is negative five. So sure enough, we got exactly the same eigenvalues. So this is kind of nice. It can save you from having to go through and do the um, quadratic equation each time to solve the more complicated ones. It's just a journal formula. And if your exam lets you use notes, this is also a way that you can just jump right to the problems. All right, that's it. If there's other weird ones you're encountering or questions you have about these, please leave a comment below. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. All right, everyone. Talk to you later.